So, hi everybody. Welcome again to another episode of uh, the Data Dice YouTube channel. Today we, Alex, talk about uh, Google Tech Manager, Google Analytics, all the news, new releases from the second half of 2022. So, Thomas, today, GA and GTM, new features? Yes. Um, I would say we start with GTM because it's again a quick thing, no big updates for GTM. When you track so. data, you also need to start with GM, uh, GTM. Yeah, so exactly, exactly. It's, it's good, uh, um, good sorting. Yeah, so as usual, uh, sadly, Google don't doesn't announce so much um, new features for GTM. One of the new features is, or it's not a new feature, uh, basically it's just um, expandation of the documentation because GTM server container can be deployed on App Engine, which is the usual way and also the way it was, or the first basically tool um, that was supported. And now they also offered it already in Cloud One, another Google Cloud service basically. And they now, for example, also have a whole documentation behind how you set up Google um, uh, server side tracking in Cloud One. Um, yeah, exactly. So there you can basically just see what you have to do in Cloud One and GTM and so on that it works. Um, I don't want to speak so much about the differences about App Engine and Cloud One. A quick thing, uh, we also don't have so much experience, especially in Cloud One. We are more using um, still App Engine for our um, services, for our server side um, containers. Um, I think one of the biggest ones is basically, um, or a good a rule of thumb is basically that for bigger projects, for bigger tracking projects, you should at least consider Cloud One, because as far as I know, there is a threshold basically in terms of how many events you are tracking and so on, that Cloud One is at a certain point um, not so expensive as it would be Cloud App, App Engine with the same kind of setup. Um, but yeah, basically it's just which server you're using and maybe you already have a Cloud One when you have a lot of experience with Cloud One, then use Cloud One. But yeah, there are no big differences. Um, <laughs> another quick thing is in the Google Ads server um, tag, basically, um, there was not a uh, field to add the conversion value inside, which is, I would say, not needed. <laughs> conversion value. No one speaks about that anymore. <laughs> so um, I think you just needed then to do a custom field and that, that you need that needs the proper name and then you can put in there the value. Um, but there was no special field to add the conversion value just uh, inside. And that's now available, basically. So also just a quick thing. Small improvement, so marketers. Yeah. Here we go again. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we have to cover these small things because not yeah, so much is there in GTM. It's, it's also when you do those implementation, it said to the customer, look, conversion value we cannot <laughs> implement. It's like a little bit like hilarious, ridiculous, however you call it. Um, but yeah. of course, there's always a way to like take care of that and uh, like do it. But yeah, with all the workarounds, it doesn't feel that natural. So this yeah, is yeah. now better implemented now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the only, I would say, also bigger one, an interesting one, is the tag coverage summary. Um, so basically, let's say you have on your e-commerce shop, whatever, you have 500 pages. And then Google is basically trying to tracking how much of these or how many of these um, pages you are tracking regularly. Um, so for example, we had not the case that uh, for a customer, the checkout process didn't work so well. Um, so basically, when you also looking over time on this um, on this tech coverage summary, then you would see that basically the checkout pages would not be tracked. Um, but yeah, for sure, especially checkouts and thank you pages. Um, hopefully, you already see it immediately before Google is uh, showing is, it to this you. This is good for QA, right? But, yeah. um, but does it completely replace all those um, browser extensions? I would say that you have normally those tech assistants. Um, or is it only valuable for server-side? Um, no, I, I, it's more a client-side thing, um, mm -hmm. but basically, so it just really says, okay, um, 
uh, you you track or let's say it like that you already tracked five uh, 500 pages for example but in the last 13 days you just tracked 450 pages or something ah, like that okay. right so that's the only thing um, it could be that also Google is basically also um, have more logic behind in terms of that they also tracking pages you never track because Google knows basically which mm -hmm. pages you have basically out of searches or whatever. Um, but that I don't know to be honest. As far as I know, they are just really say, okay, you tracked beforehand, you tracked these pages um, and they are not there anymore or you don't track them. Maybe they're also not there. Maybe Google knows that. Not completely sure. Um, I think a cool thing, um, but yeah, also just a small thing. Yes. Um, that's it already for GTM. Cool. No I think at that point, um, I also have to say that you are writing once a month the, yes. the release Beginning blog and it's published where? On Medium, on Geek Culture. Yes, on Geek Culture, yeah. So and on our website. <laughs> and on our website, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So go to our website or to Medium Geek Culture, whatever <laughs> feels more natural to you. And um, check Alex um, release blog post, we can say it, for Google Tech Manager, for Google Analytics, for BigQuery and mm -hmm. for Dataform, Looker Data Studio. Form, Luka yeah. Studio yeah. Those four are, are inside at the moment. We will check if we can add one or two other tools we use at the moment, but um, that's uh, super good for me because Alex sends it internally every week. <laughs> <laughs> but you need to wait till the end of the month. Um, but then you also stay up to date and you don't need to wait for the half year YouTube video. So at that point, maybe quick mm -hmm. information. Yes. Yeah, so then let's continue with GA basically. Mm -hmm. So first point is that GA4, we are just talking about GA4 now because as you know, UA is not so important anymore. I at least don't get any Should new features. Should we talk half an hour about that? <laughs> <laughs> Again? <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> um, yes, so GA4 has a lot of new, um, or got a lot of new um, uh, dimensions, metrics, calculations, KPIs, however you want to call it. One of them is the bounce rate. We already talked about the bounce rate. Um, I think it's just basically because a lot of customers said they want to have the bounce rate back again in GA4 because they used it in UA. It's a complete different approach how basically now the bounce rate is working, but we have of the bounce rate. <laughs> <laughs> but we have the bounce rate. Um, yeah. Should we quickly uh, explain uh, how the bounce rate is defined now? Yes, so basically, yeah, yeah. So we already talked about, you can also see it here or here, I don't know. Um, I'm just here today to ask questions, to Alex, <laughs> <laughs> as you might recognize. Uh, yeah. But we can quickly summarize it. So basically you have in um, GA4, you had already the session engaged metrics. So there you basically know how much people engaged with your, with your um, ins or inside the session. So how many sessions was engaged. Engagement meant a second page, second view. page view or event, right? A event, yes. But scrolling, um, of course, is not included. Yeah, yeah. I think page view. Yeah. Or events. a conversion event mm -hmm. or 10 seconds, I think, to be 10 seconds. Sec on the, uh, can, the can, you add, uh, can you change that, by the way? Do you know that? So, so, I think so yes. I think it should yes. be, right? Because uh, yes. also beforehand, you could change how long, for example, in UA, how long a session yeah, yeah. is like uh, running sure 30 can. minutes was standard. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, so that basically was the session engaged rate. So basically, when you have 100 sessions and 60 uh, or, and 60 sessions of this of the 100 session was engaged, then you have a session engaged rate of 60 percent, and quite easy. Then you have a bounce rate of 30 percent. So that means it's just basically 40 percent. Yeah, what did I say? 30. Oh, I know 30. Okay. <laughs> 40. So yeah. 30. Say so always the comments and I. Uh, and the rest 10 percent <laughs> yeah, so 40 to 30 yeah, yeah. Uh, so 40 to 60 <laughs> yeah. damn it um yeah exactly so it's basically just the the um the other way of calculating it which is better right i mean it was uh, uh, not as nice mm -hmm. before because mm -hmm. you also had this like uh, it was not engagement rate before engagement rate was not was not no, there no. in ua but um no. you also had this um bounce rate and exit rate and so on so mm -hmm. now it's good yeah. easy to remember yes um, then we have also some new session metrics um, which we also already discussed in one of the videos before GA4 is more or <laughs> at least tried at the beginning to be more user driven mm -hmm. um, and but I think also due to feedback and so on they are now going back there a little bit and say okay we are now also offering 
same di dimensions and metrics and so on you have on user level. We are also now offering on session level again. They, they, they tried yeah. to do a change and community said no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, something like conversion rates and yeah. so on um, and a lot of other stuff is not also important. Uh, uh, yeah, it's not there in... I mean, of course, time. you can argue with all the like changes to... Um, um, also consent and, and, and click journeys, which are way harder to, 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 to record now. Um, as normally, click chains are getting like shorter due to ad blockers, consent, I don't know, new cookies. Um, they try to make it more user-based. And on the, one hand, on the one hand side, it makes sense. So we, we have a lot of projects which are going back to like first click at the end, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and really like but when you look at the last like let's say seven years of marketing like first click was an absolute no-go so when you did first click you had no idea what you're talking about at the end right but nowadays like more and more like uh, companies are going back to first click because because first of all um d2c businesses when we talk about direct to consumer they are interested more in like where's my brand like uh, wh where do the people know my brand from and then first click is, is is a good approach second of all they work a lot with influencers also there like first click um, makes makes total sense and um and 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 it gives you or doesn't give you the hassle of like those short click chains so sometimes you have maybe five six sessions till someone is like converting but if those six sessions are basically uh, being cut in the middle, then you have an issue and, and then your attribution is not working anyway. So first click is quite good. Mm -hmm. um, and then this user-centric or user-based based approach from GA4 made kind of sense. But what you should not forget is marketers didn't do user-centric or user-based like approach the last years. So their whole like metrics will change from one day to the other and 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 you still need um like session um like session di se session dimensions um to 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 analyze that and um I'm, I'm not quite sure how this is like done at the moment but if you look at ga4 and you look at utm parameters for example like uh, channel grouping and so on um, in the raw data, mm -hmm. you get um, the user-based version of your channel grouping and so on. But this didn't change, right? This no, is still the same. Still, yeah, in the raw and, data, and, it's still the same. And, and I see it. This is a, like a big, still a big issue because um, either when I basically take my data, bring it to BigQuery, and would like to connect it to the rest of my data. Either I go for the uh, user-based, uh, uh, what's it called, um, channel grouping mm -hmm. or source, medium, campaign, or I need to calculate it myself. And that's quite tricky because then you need to look for referrer, you need to look for UTM parameters inside your um, um, domain, um, URL, I mean. Yeah. And um, Still, for example, the auto-tagging is a problem then in GADs and so on, so... Exactly. So, so it's for the ones where you have good UTM parameters, that doesn't yeah. make, th that's no problem. But for example, for Google Ads, it starts already yeah. like getting tricky or for like all the stuff which is organic or uh, social media, um, like so social traffic. Um, you need to do then your own combination of referrer and, 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 and looking what, what, what the referrer is. And this is kind of tough and tricky, to be honest. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good. Okay. Um, yes, then we have filters for custom reports. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, Google uh, GA4 is also more um, supporting this make your own dashboards inside GA4, making your own reports. Um, and so they have two different ways of doing it. So you can do these explorations, I think it's called. Um, so basically, that's the kind of custom reports you had already in UA, in Universal Analytics. Um, but in a way better form and with way more basically opportunities you have, possibilities. Um, but that's not the, so there, the filters, for example, was already there. Not really handy because I think the viewers of the of these report cannot change it or do I have to edit it again? Something like that. But 
basically now in this custom report, so you can basically change your whole navigation on the left side of your property. You can change if you like, because for example, you don't have any kind of conversions on your website or something like that. Then you can take out the whole conversion um, um, topic and pages, and then you can, for example, take inside more um, reports about acquisition of users and so on, or sessions. <laughs> um, and basically these custom reports you were not really able to filter. For example, a good use case is always you want to see a newsletter um, traffic, for example, and then you just want to filter for one UTM campaign, which is then all the newsletters or source or whatever medium, however you um, define it. Um, yes, and now basically you can make an acquisition report for your, um, for your email traffic, um, newsletter traffic, whatever, um, which is cool. Yes, um, and then we have the, just a quick thing, the um, access logging API, we also never tried it so far. Um, I think it's also just important for bigger companies. So basically with this API, you can see how many users, and I even think which users, but not completely sure, are using the properties and the reports, how often and which pages and so on. So you get some information about your property and the access about it. Is it, is it even allowed uh, on the privacy side? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know, but it's it, it's there. So, um, but we never for tried. For security reasons, probably yes. For controlling mm -hmm. the employees, probably yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, interesting topic. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Then we have uh, two new enhanced measurements um, dimensions, basically. Having the word enhanced me measurements already. That's yeah, nice. One. Super cool. Um, yeah. So basically, GA4 also in in, in um, comparison with UA. They improved this basically just basic, basic setup of tracking your website, right? In terms of a lot of new events already. I think scrolling was there before already, but now it's even better. Um, and a lot of new um, measurements you have when you are just basically activating GA4 tracking uh, by default. And there are two more. So basically now we have form start and form submit. Quite easy, I think. Form start is basically when the user interacts with, with a form. And form submit is then when the user basically, um, yeah, Submits. accepting it, submitted, exactly. Um, for sure, you basically have to use the correct HTML things and so on on your website that basically Google knows what's going on there. Um, but I think that should be quite easy. Um, and I, I think a cool thing, um, and it's by default, you basically just, so important for new properties, it's already available or activated by default. For already existing properties, you just quickly have to go into the settings, enhanced measurements, enhanced measurements, and um, activating it, um, and then you have it basically. Yes. Um, then we have some new date and time dimensions also. So, for example, we have now you can now see your data, for example, in the exploration part based on week or based on date or based uh, date was already there before I think, but based on month, for example. I'm not sure how it is with the week, uh, if it's the ISO week or ISO not. week. <laughs> not sure for German uh, the people. Best, the best, the best uh, example for using ChatGPT uh, for BigQuery. Uh, uh. Um, not sure to be honest, but at least there's a week. Um, so from 1 till 53, I think. Um, yes. Um, uh, did, we, did we try out um, enhanced measurements for e-commerce already in one project? Uh, what do you mean with trying out and how? With uh, add to cart, like uh, checkout and uh, remove from the Yeah, so basically this enhanced measurement is more these usual events you have, right? So basically... Um, uh, what was the other name then? Yeah, um, uh, you mean what, what was before enhanced e-commerce, right? Exactly, you mean, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. um, that changed a little bit, right? Mm. There are the... How are the basic ones? Are they called basic measurements? No, they are called... What was the name for the others? I don't know. Or was that enhanced measurement? Ah, we will show it. Uh, I also come always in, in problems with, with the names. Uh, anyway, we will quickly show it here yeah, somewhere. Yeah, somewhere yeah. Um, yes. Um, then we have a new um, landing page report because that was also missing a little bit before in GA4 and I think also quite important for a lot of um, companies basically. So now you also know on a default page which was the landing page for every session or every user. I think it was it's more on session based. Um, yes, so basically, who, who, what was the landing pages? And I think the last important one is basically to, we, uh, Google now offered a spreadsheet add-on where you can 
um, basically s um, select your old Universal Analytics property, and then you can say, okay, please import all the audiences I have in UA, so all your audience audiences. You're getting then a list, and then you can say, okay, I want these audiences, please recreating it in the GA4, GA4. Property, as, property I also selected. Um, that is quite cool. I quickly tried it and it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> that um, is the one not so cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, with a quite basic um, audiences, uh, I also have to say, basically. I think I also got now one or two more feedbacks from customers and so on who, who tried it on their own and it didn't work so good. Um, the good thing is basically you're at least getting also error um, messages, basically, so that you then know, okay, Maybe there's a field missing or you can at least also Google for it or something. Um, because for sure, when you are tracking something in UA, you also need to track same kind of data in GA4, right? Because, uh, but it highly depends on how complex your audiences are for Google Ads. Or it's also interesting that we speak about like basic things like that and say, wow, that's super cool that this is now there. Yeah, I mean, right. you do, that's, that's one of the major tools you use in online marketing mm -hmm. and <laughs> Naturally, you would say, okay, if the company who is providing that tool is changing something in the tool landscape, and I understand that Google did that change in terms of like getting event based and not being uh, like page view based anymore, yeah. but like uh, merging your audiences and even your like, for example, channel grouping, which is still not existing. No. Is it there now? Custom channel grouping is not there. Nice. Um, so if it would be there, then it would be things like where you would naturally think, okay, I can simply like copy it from one place to the other. If I would be the product manager, uh -huh. I think I would like at least should that suggest that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's also then the story, right? Because I think a lot of companies have, have a lot of audiences. I always see lists of 50 and more audiences just for one property. And you have then maybe also uh, for every country a property and then you have always the same audiences. You have to copy all of them to, um, manually to GA4. Yeah. Big shout out to all the interns and uh, <laughs> yeah. the people in the companies who have a good have a good time doing that. Uh, uh. Okay, yeah, that's it basically. Oh, for one thing we forgot, I guess. Um, I, th I think it was not a change from uh, from 2022, but the current one with the properties which get automatically created. Yeah. Uh, you, you can, yeah. Alex knows way more than, yeah. uh, than I do about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's basically already from this year, but yeah, we can quickly discuss because I think it's also quite an urgent topic. Exactly. Um, yeah. um, so basically, even when you have already a GA4 property, but you still have a universal analytics, uh, universal analytics property, which you still have, I think, is that Google is automatically creating a GA4 property for you. Yeah. And if you nice. <laughs> so we talked about, uh, let's make it easier for, for, for everyone. Yeah. This actually does, but. <laughs> yeah. But there is no tracking behind or something, right? They are basically just, and maybe they're also recreating some settings you're doing in Universal Ethics. You're, they are also then doing a GA4, that could be, but. Yeah, you, then you have a new property. A lot of customers will then say, okay, you know, appear the new property. What's going on here? No data coming in. Um, yeah. But, uh, but it's an extra property, correct? Yeah. yeah. So, so, so let's imagine, let's make this example here. We have universal analytics. We have a running GA4 property because no one will ra wait till this is automatically merged. That, 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 that's not a good idea, by the way. If you, ask, if, if you still ask yourself, can I wait? Don't. Because um, you need to learn GA4, you need to learn all the new features and uh, way how to do things. Um, and uh, so let's say you have Universal Analytics, you have GA4. And then when is this property going to be created? When the end of life cycle? Uh, I think happen? in April, um, somewhere. So um, a little bit before, before basically. basically. So this will automatically be created. But then you need to set up the streaming or like the, 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 the property streaming. Um, you need to set up that manually. So if you have the GA4 already, it makes no sense for you, correct? Okay, so, and what can we do to not getting this new property created? Yeah, so basically inside your account settings, I think more property settings, you basically can select that you don't want to auto-generate um, auto these GA4 properties. Um, 
We also, but that we want to try out, there is also a tool basically. So there's an API basically for it to really, to, so to go to your property and um, turn on or off this, um, this setting. And basically we already saw that people made a Google Sheet, for example, for it to, to change that. That we want to try out. We can also let you know then how it worked. Um, but then it's basically, so, or you go, if you just have one property or one account, basically go in uh, into the property and deselecting it and then it's good. Um, yeah, exactly. Good. Okay, nice. Then, yeah, then I will quickly, uh, should I, uh, yeah, so you can also check our Medium blog post, as you said. <laughs> I said it. I said it. Do it. We said it this time already. <laughs> yeah. I was giving it a more prominent space, yeah, let's okay, say. Okay, okay, yeah. Let's say. So Medium, I don't have to say anything about it anymore. <laughs> um, but we also have still LinkedIn, where we also do a lot of... Um, we do way more LinkedIn now, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, we have to say, um, because I think it's also a good channel for us, um, uh, some, some, some uh, posts, mm -hmm. articles, um, yeah, yeah. Um, and not only, of course, the updates uh, on Medium, but also, also a lot of, other, other yeah, a lot of new um, custom uh, uh, colleagues and so on are also writing blog posts about different th themes. We also have now one Power BI, um, for example, because we also know uh, Power BI blog posts. We, of course, we also now They're coming more into action with Power BI. Serious, as far yeah. as I know, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Of course, we already have some experience with Power BI, but now also for a lot of new projects, we're also starting with Power BI. So due to that, we are now also starting a series about it because we also know more experience there. Yes, then we have still our newsletter, our weekly newsletter, where you see some cool Twitter and yeah, or generally social media posts about data. It's um, less about uh, web tracking or um, no. uh, uh, data engineering. It's more about nice ideas, how to visualize mm -hmm. things. Yeah? No. So not like is super boring with bar charts and column charts and uh, some metrics, but more like how can you have certain use cases and put them into a really nice like uh, visualization, which is easily grabbable by anyone. Mm -hmm. And this is part of the newsletter. Yeah, yeah. 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 And last one, um, please subscribe our channel, um, clicking on the bell and that you don't forget any new video from us. We will also now try again to publish it more regularly, our YouTube videos. Um, we are also working currently on a new setup, basically. Right? Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Um, Stay tuned, yeah. you will see. Yeah, yeah. Great times ahead. <laughs> yeah. Good. Okay, yeah, then have a good time and see you. See you later. Bye.